Hello and welcome to my satisfactory overclocking tutorial where I will explain the mechanics behind it and why to use it. The overclocking interface is accessed by clicking a building that produces something, either items or power. To unlock this interface you need to finish tier 0 and research a slug in the hub, a power slug, and then you need to do the overclock production milestone in the hub. You can clock any machines between 1% and 250% in whole numbers, but for every 50% over 100, you need to insert a power shard. So one shard lets you clock up to 150%. And the power shards are made from power slugs in different quantities dependent on color of the slug. Green is one, yellow is two, and purple is five right now anyway. It's still early access and stuff is subject to change. There's two kinds of overclocking in the game and that is item producing buildings and power producing buildings. I look at the power producing buildings first because it's a lot simpler and a lot less numbers involved. Power in Satisfactory is made by consuming items like leaves, biofuel or coal. Overclocking a power producing building simply makes them produce more power by spending more fuel. The formula is exponential, but the spending and generating are inversely proportional, which means that you get as much power out of one fuel item, no matter what the clock speed is. Or said more simply, underclocking makes the building slower, while overclocking makes it faster. Here's a spreadsheet of the numbers involved. I obtained the numbers from the wiki, and I'm going to put a link below to that site because it's been extremely useful. Underclocking is probably in practice not very useful unless you want a specific power plant to produce less than others you have. Overclocking is more useful. If you overclock to 250%, it will in effect work as if it was two of the same building, which makes it easier on construction cost and it uses a lot less space. One thing to look at though is that for every 50% you raise a power generating building, the next 50% will have a smaller effect. So it gives you more capacity to have two different buildings working at 150% than to have one at 100% and one at 200%. Overclocking item producing buildings is a bit more complicated, but a lot more useful and fun. Item constructing buildings in Satisfactory either turns input items into different items to output, or in the case of miners, just output without having an input. Those need to be placed on specific locations though. The formula for overclocking item producing buildings is very simple when it comes to input and output. The production speed is the clock percent. So we're building at 200% will work twice as fast as one that runs on 100% clock speed. The power formula, however, is exponential. So the clock speed will have a massive impact on the power consumption of the, of the building. So unlike the power producing buildings, the item producing buildings will spend more power per item made. And this is the important thing to notice, per item made. And that's what makes this interesting as well. But what does it mean in practice? It means that even if a building is only on half the time, it will save you power to slow it down to 50% and have it running at all times. It means that when a belt can't move enough of the output product, like when making copper cables or screws in the beginning, the output of the machine is 90 items a minute, but the belts can only carry 60. You simply save power by turning down uh, the clock to 67%. You save a bit more than 21% of the power by doing this, or around one fifth. This also has a function when smelting. One smelter can take 30 items a minute, and one miner on a normal field mines 60 which means you can split the belt into two and use two smelters to smelt all the production. Those two smelters are at 100% in that scenario. With underclocking though, you can instead split it into three because you already have the splitter made 
As long as you have room for one more smelter, you can use three of them at 67% clock speed and save around one fifth of the power here as well. The only cost is one smelter and two belts. So even if it seems minor, the uh, cost of the smelter and belts is also extremely low. Alternatively, in the beginning, if you have only one smelter, uh, like you do with the first one you made, you can turn the miner down to 50% and save around one third of the power spent on that one. Early in the game, this might even save you some time because you have to manually gather leaves and wood to fuel your power plants in the beginning. There is also overclocking on the production buildings. If you lack room or just want the convenience of not having to build another assembler for an item you want made, it's very convenient to just turn up the clock speed. Overclocking miners is also a good alternative. Coal miners can be overclocked and still be energy efficient, considering you have enough coal plants to turn it into power. It's also convenient to use on other miners because mining spots are limited and a good mining spot can be worth exploiting to the fullest. In conclusion, low clock speed means lower power cost per item. High clock speed means higher power cost per item. With enough power, you can overclock anything and everything and not have drawback as long as you have enough power shards. For instance, if you have access to a lot of coal and coal power plants. Before you get to that stage though, I would highly recommend you checking out Catherine of Sky's uh, tutorial on biomass and biofuel. Because in the beginning, you will save so much of the struggle by setting up a construction of the biomass and biofuel and that in combination with underclocking will make the early game so much smoother. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below so feel free to check out that as well. Thank you all for watching and I hope you are having as much fun as I am with Satisfactory.